Are you tired of veggie burgers that fall apart, are mushy and tasteless, and full of ingredients you'd rather not even deal with? Me too. That's why the ingredients in my veggie burgers are so simple and easy to find, even the tiniest little small town grocery store will have them. I promise. And unlike so many other veggie burger recipes out there, these ones don't turn out mushy and they taste really, really good. I'm so happy with this recipe, even a carnivore like me makes them regularly. It's so simple you're probably gonna laugh, but that's okay because sometimes it's good to laugh. We're going to begin with a piece of equipment that's as simple as the ingredients in these burgers, a box grater. I'm going to use the fine side and the coarse side. And on the fine side, I'm going to grate 50 grams of carrot. That's about half a medium sized carrot. Now on the coarse side, I'm going to grate 50 grams of celery. This might be a little bit of a challenge because celery is so stringy, but eventually it does go all the way through. When you use the box grater, the texture comes out a little more interesting than if you did this in the food processor, a little more chunky and organic, but that's okay. Now we're going to grate 100 grams of onion. And maybe you already know this, but in the culinary world, this trio is called a mirepoix. It's the three classic aromatics. We're also going to add one clove of garlic, grate that on the fine side. And there we have a really delicious mixture. When I have mushrooms, I love to grate three or four mushrooms in this too, but I didn't have them today and they still turn out really well without them. Next, we're gonna add some salt, one and a half teaspoons. And I know that seems like a lot for such a small amount of vegetables, but that's all the salt we're gonna use in the entire recipe. Mix that around really well. That salt is going to start drawing out the moisture from those vegetables. So don't be afraid to agitate it a bit, kind of mash it around. That's going to really encourage that liquid to come out. We're going to set that aside for a few minutes and into a large bowl, we're going to add two cups of quick cooking oats. Now, if you are gluten-free, do make sure your oats are certified gluten-free. Most commercially made oats do contain traces of gluten. We're also going to add half a cup of whole wheat flour. For the gluten-free version, you can use rice flour. We're going to add in one teaspoon of dried Italian herbs. So basil, oregano, stuff like that and lots of freshly cracked black pepper. Feel free to add whatever herbs and spices and seasonings you want. Remember, at the end of the day, these veggie burgers are your masterpiece. Once those dry ingredients are mixed together, I'm gonna add in one can of drained but not rinsed black beans, along with those vegetables that have been sitting in the salt. And you can see that a lot of that liquid is coming out. That's perfect. We're gonna dump all of that in there. And finally, our very last ingredient, one teaspoon of soy sauce. Now keep in mind, traditional soy sauce does contain gluten, so make sure yours is gluten-free if you can't have it. Otherwise, here are a few really good gluten-free substitutes for soy sauce. All right, mash those black beans down with a fork. Of course, you could use any cooked bean or lentil of your choice for this recipe. You're gonna notice that at this stage when you mix everything together, it's very likely going to be very dry and stiff. Feel free to add a tablespoon or two of water if that happens. I usually don't bother because I want my mixture to be very stiff. That way I won't have a mushy burger. And I always make sure that I don't over mash the beans. That way my burgers have a little more texture. Now you want to cover it and refrigerate it for at least four hours, but I usually just let it go overnight. So here we are the next day. And the reason why you absolutely have to let this sit for at least four hours is not only to develop the flavor, but to give the oats and the flour a chance to absorb some liquid. That way they'll cook a lot more thoroughly and taste way better. Make your burgers as big or small as you want. I usually get about five or six out of this batch. This mixture is really easy to shape. It already smells so good, and I want you to see how beautiful that texture is with all the crushed black beans. And because we grated the carrot, celery, and onion, it has a lot of really nice, hearty, and chunky substance to it. It's gonna be really good. So I'm gonna heat two tablespoons of oil in a pan on medium high, and I'm only gonna cook one burger right now, and I wanna sear it for about a minute on each side until it gets a nice color on it. So let's flip this over after 45 seconds to a minute. And that's perfect right there. So we'll let it go for another minute or so on the other side. We'll check that out. And that color right there is perfect. So when it looks like that, turn your flame down to the absolute lowest setting, put a lid on it and let it cook for 15 minutes on each side. That might sound like a lot for a veggie burger, but the oats and whole wheat flour do take that long to cook. And when it's your first time doing this, you'll wanna check it every few minutes just to make sure it's not burning on the bottom. The idea is to cook this low and slow. If there's condensation on the lid, then that's a really good sign that your burger patty is cooking thoroughly. So this here has been cooking for 15 minutes on each side. You can see that it did darken a little bit, but not all that much. 
And you might be wondering, can I bake these burgers? If you brush them with oil, yes you can, but they don't turn out quite as nice as when you cook them in the pan. They're a little more dry and crumbly when you bake them. Oh, and I almost forgot, if you missed out on the ingredients and all the measurements and everything, the link for the complete printable recipe for these veggie burgers can be found, as always, in the description box down below. Oh, and yes, I would like fries with that, thank you very much. How did you know? What I bet you didn't know is those fries were made in the oven and I've linked the recipe for those below too. Alright, let's put whatever we want on our burger. I'm keeping it pretty simple today. I normally like putting cheese on my burger too, but today I didn't have any. So I'm going to put the top on here and I want to show you how really meaty this burger looks. I'm pretty sure that after you eat this burger you're going to feel really full, but not in a gross way. They're really satisfying and they're packed full of veggie flavor because we have those main aromatics in there. All right, why don't we take a closer look at the texture here? I just want you to see that this also makes really great, you know, little Salisbury steaks. You can do meatballs with this mixture, bake it into a meatloaf. Maybe one day I'll do a video on different things you can make with this mix alone. If you'd like to see a video like that, then let me know by leaving me a comment down below. But as you can see here, guys, there is absolutely no mushiness whatsoever. And the flavor, well, you're just going to have to make them yourself and let me know what you think. Please don't forget to share this video with all your friends. It helps out the channel so much, and I appreciate it to the moon and back. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.